guys, it's me again. Thanks for coming back. Welcome to another episode of That's Cakeable on Cakeflix Live TV. And this week I'm going to show you how I created this gorgeous little velvet spray ombre cake with chocolate decorations. So to make this cake, I thought that I would strip it right back to basics and show you how I ganache my cakes. I know that a lot of you out there already know how it's done, but there's no right or wrong way to do it. And I figured that we've probably got a lot of skill levels on here. So I'm just going to show you how I do mine. And it's all part of the process of making this particular cake anyway. Once I ganache the cake, I'm then going to show you how to make some really simple chocolate decorations. I'm not a fan of working with chocolate, I will admit it. So that's why I'm keeping it super simple, okay? So there'll be no tempering or anything like that. I'm using compound chocolate. I'm cheating, pretty much. And then last but not least, I'm gonna show you how to create your own velvet spray at home for an awesome effect. I love this effect, it's one of my favorites. And then we'll put the whole thing together. So as I do every single week, here's the material list of the things you will need if you want to join in. I've also got the list of materials on my website under the Cake Flicks tab, just head to thatscakeable.com, go to the Cake Flicks tab, click on that, and you will find all of the resources right there. All right, without any further ado, let's get started. Don't forget, I'll be online, so I'll be able to answer your questions as we go along. Okay, so I'm starting off with my cake that I'd actually already just done a quick crumb coat on. So went ahead a little bit. It looks a bit funny and funky and dark because I've used a really dark buttercream in there. So yeah, just ignore that. And then I've got some delicious, yummy, chocolatey, chocolatey, chocolate, chocolatey, chocolate, chocolatey, chocolate ganache. So I'm using a white chocolate ganache for this cake. And if you're going to put a um, cocoa spray over the top, I recommend that using a lighter colored ganache underneath is probably the best bet. So, to start, I'm going to plonk a good amount of ganache right on top. Just like that. At this point, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Level it off, like, reasonably well. But the perfection comes later. It is so busy outside today and I can hear all those cars going. Sorry if you can too. I'm using an acrylic disc that I've covered in some uh, plastic wrap. Uh, this is a six inch to match the baseboard. You can also use, if you don't have acrylic discs, you can also use um, another cake board. The same size as the one on the bottom, I'll pop that on top. I'm gonna go around and make sure that it's all even, which this is not, if you can see, here we go. See there's like a space here. So I'll push that over a little bit so that it, I said push it over a little bit. There we go. Now we're matching up. All the way around, all the way around, all the way around. Looks pretty good to me. And then very generously, start adding my ganache. You'll be able to see this a little better from this angle. Like I said, don't be stingy here. Add loads, because we're going to scrape it off anyway, so it doesn't matter. And I do tend to do this. I know that people go along and do the whole thing in one hit. Um, I don't know why, but I tend to go and do like, as you can see, I've come in and done the top half first, and then I scrape that back with my bench scraper using that top board as my guide. There we go. And then I'll go around and do the same on the bottom. Making sure we're filling in that entire gap between that top board and the baseboard. Also, the other thing that I think is really important is uh, the consistency of your ganache. And I think you can see this, and you've probably heard it a million times by now, but a nice peanut butter consistency is perfect. I'm just going to give this a quick scrape now. Once again, using the top and baseboard as my guide. I 
And of course, we're ending up with some divots and stuff like that. Not a big deal at this stage. This is always interesting. Ganashing or doing anything, any sort of decorating on this angle. But you guys are going to be able to see, right? All the way around. Okay, so now I've got my, you see that? Got my initial initial coat on there. With a smaller spatula, I'm going to go around and fill in some of those, whoops! Nearly a ganache everywhere. Those divots. And there's lots. Lots of it. I'm definitely going to have to pop this baby into the fridge for a chill before I put a final coat on. It is warm in here today. But we did wake up this morning in Melbourne, Australia, and apparently it was our coldest June morning since 2015. It was freezing. It's definitely snowing somewhere. Definitely. All right, so what I generally do is I don't fight the cake because if you start fighting the cake, you'll end up pulling the chocolate and stuff like that. It's not worth the struggle. So I'm going to very quickly pop this aside to chill and then I'm going to bring it back and do another coat. All right, I've let this set in the freezer probably for about five minutes, so it wasn't really even that long. And I've rewarmed my ganache to a slightly thinner consistency now. I hope you can see that. And now I'm going to... Go over and smooth this baby out. I think that's good. Even with some of my little crusty bits I've got in there. And then once again, I'm just going to take my scraper around and scrape all that excess right off. All right, that's pretty good. We're pretty much there now. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is take that little top board off. Just wash my hands. Godliness is next to godliness. To do that, all I'm doing is taking a cup, a blade, and oh, some boiling hot water that I keep in my cupboard. So everybody keeps their boiling hot water in the cupboard now. No? No. And then to remove the board is to start just cutting off the plastic wrap that was on the top. Just like this. I just like to keep the blade warm because it slices through any messy chocolate that's on the top and makes it a little easier. You don't pull it as much then. All the way around. Go on, cooperate. Here we go. Da -da, that's done. I'm just going to pull that plastic wrap down that's now sitting on the top of the cake. And now I'm going to lift that board right off and drop everything and take the plastic wrap off. All right. So we've now ended up with not the perfect top, but that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to fix the top of the cake. Okay. Now to do that, all I do, first thing I'll probably do is actually ganache it back to my board again, which is probably a good plan. There we go. And then I'm going to just add some more ganache to the top. Like that. And this is where we want to get it nice and level. And the other thing I want is if you can see here, I'm actually making a lip right over the edge. And we want that. I want a lip over the edge. All right? So there we go. I'll show you on the side view that I have a little bit of a lip here. You can see I've got a lip all the way around here. 
and that's exactly what I want. I then take a large tub with some more hot water and I'm making sure it's large so I can fit my big scraper in there. And then I'm placing my scraper sideways, like holding it against the side and pushing that lip upwards. And this is exactly what I want to happen. I know it looks sort of messy at this stage, but it won't, I promise. Okay, and that is it. All right, guys, I'm gonna pop this back in the freezer for about 10 minutes, and while we wait for this guy to chill, I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of a break. See you back in a second. Okay, so I've now given the cake a little bit of time to chill and now the magic happens and we get our nice sharp edges. So I'm just taking a blade that I'm dipping in some boiling hot water. Now you want to make it, make sure that it's reasonably long blade and nice and flat. Make it nice and hot. And then I'm just going to run that flush along the top of the cake. You'll have to re-dip because the blade will get nice and cold, nice and quick. Dipping, 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 and running under. Stop, oh, stop whenever you feel it like starting to resist, because that means that your blade's cooled down and it's not running through. But when it's nice and hot, super simple. resisting a bit now so I was pushing it but I was right at the end so I figured why not to finish up just take my big scraper one more time with some nice hot water and that's it that is how, you see it there, okay, yes, you can. That is how I can ash my cakes with a nice, sharp edge. Okay, so what we have to do now is pop this baby into the fridge or the freezer. Now, if you put it in the freezer, don't keep it in there too long. We want it cold, but we don't want it really, really cold. Otherwise, our velvet spray will crack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop this aside into the fridge while we work on our chocolate decorations. Okay, so to make the chocolate decorations, I'm just starting with some melted white compound chocolate. I just melted this in the microwave. And I have a second bowl right here. And I'm going to tip a little bit of that in there. We're gonna play sharesies, just like that. And now I'm using Color Mill, which is an oil-based food coloring made here in Australia, I'm pretty sure. But I'm pretty sure you could get it anywhere. And I'm going to color one of my bowls of white chocolate, a lovely raspberry. 
you can see that. So pretty. And now I've got a few options here for decorations. So the first decoration I'm going to make is a really simple chocolate sail. I've got a bottle of soy sauce here. Mm -hmm. Tools of the trade. What I'm going to do is pour just a little bit of my pink chocolate on just some parchment paper, baking paper, parchment paper, whatever you wish to call it. And I'm just going to spread it out a little bit by shaking the paper. And I'm going to leave it a, about a minute or so to set. Okay, we'll come back to that in just a second. While that sets, I'm going to fill up these molds. They're just, they're simply discs, silicon molds. And I'm just going to put a little bit of pink in one, just like that. And give it a shake and a tap. Just like that, as the dog chimes in. And some white in the larger disc. Like that. Pop those aside because they'll need to set, of course. And of course, you can use any molds you wish. On this piece of parchment paper, I'm just going to pour out a little bit of white chocolate like that and once again shake it like a polaroid picture and this one i'm going to make a little bit more fancy fancy pants and i'm just going to add a pink drizzle through that and then we're just going to let that set possibilities here endless and the last mold I have is actually a sphere mold. This can get a bit messy. So I'm just going to pour chocolate into the sphere molds like that. Mixing up the colors, a couple of white and a pink. And last one. Whoop! See, told you get messy. That's all right. Scrape that off. Give it a tap. Pop it aside. All of those need to be set up. Now let's come back to our lovely soy sauce bottle. Okay. I'm going to take my parchment and lay it over. The top of the bottle and then I've let it set far too long let's quickly do another one to show you proof that it happens to us all you have the greatest of intentions you get carried away with other things and it all goes awry and I've probably made this one a bit large-ish. Actually, I'm taking this one out. We're just starting again. Don't forget, if that happens, keep it on your baking paper, set it, peel it off, and you can melt it down and use it again. This is probably going to be too runny now. Let's just see how we go. Pick it up. This is going to run everywhere, okay? So it's really messy. You're going to have to do a good bench clean afterwards. And I'm just using some mini bulldog clips to hold my parchment in place. It's super runny, but I'm actually much happier with that. Much happier. I'm going to pick that up a little bit there. There we go. Okay, so super messy, but super simple. What I'm going to do now is pop all of these into the freezer just to set up for a moment. And while I do that, I'll leave you with a message from our sponsors and I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, so the white chocolate with the drizzles that we did on the parchment paper, I'm now going to cut. 
So I've just got a craft knife and I have a stainless steel ruler. And you want to make, when you make your cuts, I'm going to find this difficult to explain. Make sure that, I'll show you first because I can't explain it without showing you. Excuse me with my hands in the way for a second. I'm just scoring this first, then cutting it. Okay, so this is the part we're getting rid of. That's the part you want on the outside of the cut. That way the inside of the cut doesn't get the built up excess chocolate and it stays nice and clean. I hope that makes sense. Makes sense to me, but then again, I'm odd. So then I'm going to take it on an angle, but of course I want the ruler covering the section that's actually going to remain. And score it first so it stops it from cracking. And there we go. A nice little chocolate shard. I'll do one more. Let's see. Mm. Confusing to my eyes. All right. Might actually just cut from, I'll just cut from there. Saves wasting chocolate. Nice and gentle. Now this hasn't, this one hasn't been in the freezer. If you put it in the freezer, it's likely to snap when you do this. So I've just set this one at room temperature. And gentle again. And there we go. So nice chocolate triangles, super duper simple. Okie dokie. So that's my first easy chocolate decoration. Now we're going to unmold our molds very, very easily. Little round discs. See, not even tempered. My goodness, the dogs. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Our little spheres. Whoop! Just running away. Here we go. Beautiful. Too easy. Lovely. And now, the moment of truth. Here we go. So, firstly, I'm taking my bulldog clips off. Like so. Now, I can see that this has attached itself a little bit to the bottle. So I'm just going to use a blade and prise that off. Because we don't want that. We don't want it sitting on the bottle. Oh, my dogs. Why can't they be more like Paco and Ben? Nice and quiet. Nope. Not my dogs. Then you want to lift it off. And very gently remove the parchment paper. I'm sort of teasing it inwards. Now the reason that I usually leave it a little bit longer than where I left it was because it thins the chocolate out, which makes this part a little more difficult. There you go. Nice chocolate sale. Okay. So I did prepare a few earlier, which is a thing I do. I'll just get them out and we can start preparing our decorations. So I've got a few more chocolate sales here, some more spheres and some more shards and some more discs. So now let's put them all together and make a cute little topper. Okay, so to make the topper, you can do this, of course, in any way that you want to, any way you want it to look. So I'm going to start with a large pink disc and pop a little bit of 
melted chocolate onto said large pink disc. And then I'm going to attach the dark pink disc that we just made to that, just like that. And then, hmm, what's next? I might add one of our little shards maybe. Oh, that looks cute. Like I said, this is totally up to you. Artistic license at its finest. Attaching that with a little bit of chocolate. Just scrape those edges so we can't see the chocolate there. And I might even go out on a limb and put a little sphere up there. Living on the edge. Just like that. And we'll pop him on right there. Beautiful. Try not to make as much mess as I did. Scrape that off a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that's basically going to be my topper. And I'm going to pop a lollipop stick right about, it's gonna be quite heavy on the cake, so probably, hmm, there and i'm just going to use a little bit of freeze spray if you don't have freeze spray do not panic just hold it and let it sit just rolling that in there pushing it down setting it in place all right our little topper is ready for the cake Ta -da! plus we'll use all the other bibs and bobs on the top of the cake but that's our main topper Okay, now let's get to the fun part. I'm going to show you how I make my cocoa butter velvet spray. It's really, really quite simple. I just take some cocoa butter and some melted white chocolate. So here, now let me see if I've got these right. 120 grams cocoa butter and 8 grams of white chocolate. Okie dokie. And then you just mix them together till they're nice and mixed. Here we go, here we go. Lovely. And that is basically your cocoa butter chocolate velvet spray, ready to go, okay? And I already have a pre-coloured one here that I've done a really dark raspberry. So that's how we're going to get our ombre effect. The other thing that I use is just a plain old paint spray gun. I got this at my hardware store for I think about $40, so $40 Australian. So um, not expensive, you don't need fancy garb. If you are taking your time with this. You can just get a pot of hot water and once it's all together, you can sit this section in the pot of hot water and it'll keep everything nice and melted so you're ready to use. My other tip, and you're about to see it, is that when you spray the cake, make sure that you're doing it inside a really big box or something. The first time I ever did this, well, the studio ended up in a lovely shade of grey splatter and I was finding grey splatter for months. So this has got good reach on it. Make sure that you do this in a nice big box out of the way. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so I will warn you, this is going to be really loud so you probably won't be able to hear me talk. The cake is nice and cool. And the first thing I'm going to do into my pot is add some of our darker colour. So... That's going in first. Then I'm going to then I'm going to attach the container to the gun. And now we're going to get loud, okay? So I apologize. But there's no other way to do this. And then you just want to start spraying. So I'm going to start spraying from the bottom and then leave it a little bit and we'll come back and I'll show you how to do the rest. I 
you can see, we're getting a nice dark color on the bottom. And because the cake is so cold, as soon as the cocoa butter hits it, it keeps its shape. So it's all speckled and raised and textured and gorgeous. Okay, once you are happy with the first color in the coverage, what you want to do is uh, unscrew your container. Then, with the white cocoa butter that we made before, whoops, that I'm spilling everywhere, pour some more of that in there. And that, of course, is going to lighten the color, resulting in ombre. Reattach. Make sure you shake it up pretty well. And go again. And last but not least, when you're happy with the coverage of that, then I'm just going to pour a little bit more out, a little bit more pink out and some more of the white in to make it lighter yet again. And there you have it. Your velvet spray ombre effect cake is ready to decorate. Now let's do that after we just take a quick break. See you in a second. Hi, my name is Paul Bradford and welcome to module one, baking and filling. After working and running businesses in the cake world for the last 25 years, I want to share some of the secrets on how to bake the perfect cake. So the first thing you're going to learn to bake in this module is three of the most popular cakes from a Madeira cake, a rich chocolate cake and of course the traditional rich fruit cake. Then you're going to move on to learn how to make the most beautiful fillings for your cakes from my tried and tested buttercream recipe and my three most popular ganaches the dark chocolate ganache, the milk chocolate ganache and the white chocolate ganache. The last stage of this module is how to cut and fill your cake. So you've got a single Medina cake here and a double barrel chocolate cake. I'm going to take you through all the different stages, how to get a level finish, how to fill the buttercream, how to fill the ganache, and of course how to get a lovely and crisp, sharp finish. Once you've completed this module, you're going to be confident in baking the perfect cake to suit any designer wedding cake or novelty cake. Welcome to module one, baking and filling. And we're back. And here it is. How pretty is it? It's just so, so sweet. I'm hoping that in the photos, you'll be able to see that texture a lot better than you can see it on film. So what I'm going to do Firstly, is just add an itty bitty ribbon around the base. Now I'm just putting glue stick on this side of the ribbon and I'm actually going to attach that to that side of the ribbon so we've got no glue stick touching the cake at all. So I'm just popping that around the base. There we go. Now I'm gonna have to turn the cake around a couple of times so I can see what I'm doing, okay? So just excuse me. Exactly like that, see? Guys, why didn't you tell me that it wasn't all the way down the bottom? Here we go. That's better. Okay, now we're going to put our little topper on that we made before. And I'm just going to pop that 
so simply now because there's a lollipop stick on it right into oops of course that's okay we can reattach so simply because there's a lollipop stick on it famous last words pop that on there and give it a quick spray now you shall stay you shall stay yes now it shall stay all right and this is the part where you can just use your own creativity so let's see i might just pop a little sphere there just one there And I might pop a white one on, the larger one, just there. So a couple of little spears there. And I'm going to pop a sail on. Now it's decisions, decisions, which sail are we putting on? A really dark one. I've made a couple of lighter ones. Oh, definitely the lighter one. That's the thing that's happening. So once again, just a little bit of chocolate on the bottom. I will turn this around for you in just a second. Attach it very gently. Like that. And then I'm just going to add on the base. You do not have to do any of this. You can completely make it your own. But I think I'm going to get a bit artistic. I'm going to pop a disc on the front. Excuse me while I point the cake my way. Set that with some freeze spray. So I've put one disc on the front. And you can even write on these discs so you can make it really personalized, which is super cool. And another disc on the disc, pretty much, just like that. And then last but not least, I may just pop, yeah, why not? Some people would say it's too busy. I say more is more. I'm just going to do this. So I've put one little sphere on and I'm putting another sphere on top of that sphere and because threes just look better, I'm going to put a third on, a little itty bitty one and then I'm going to call it done because there's more is more and then there's just silly. And there you go, that is it. What do you guys think? Something very, very different. Of course, you can use any colors that you want, um, but that is how you do your own velvet spray at home and make really simple chocolate decorations to go onto your cake if they wanna stay on your cake and not misbehave like my discs decided. Anyway, guys, that is it from me this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, I hope you're all staying healthy and safe and well. And don't forget to tune in right after me for the next amazing artist on Cake Flicks TV. I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.